one, Doc. We're almost there. There we go. There we go. Here, give me a coat. One at a time, one at a time. There you go. Yeah, lie down on the sofa. There you go. Just stretch out there. I get your pillow. Don't worry about messing up the sofa. Half the police force amount of cellar slept on that sofa. <laughs> Same condition. Ah, uh, here, prop your head up. Can't go home, Steve. No, they couldn't go home either. Go home. Yeah, I know, I know, you told me. Listen, maybe I should, uh, I should give him the cooler. Call him the no, phone. No, don't. Don't do that, please. No. Would you like some coffee? No. No, just, just a little bit of sleep. Just sleep for a little while, I'll be, I'll, I'll be fine. All right, just relax. Take all the time you want. Tell you the truth, I've got to go over to the Monticello Arms Hotel. Meet Deborah over there, uh, for Owen Madison's suite. It's gonna give us a sneak preview of that movie, Mansion of the Dam. Movie. Nola Madison. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Nola Madison. Uh, Nola Patterson, I think that's her stage name, right? A witch. Yeah, that's the one. You know, Doc, you, uh, I think you got things a little messed up uh, over at your office. You said something about Nola Madison playing the role of Martha Corey. That's true, Steve. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't supposed to tell anybody, but it's the truth. Wait a minute, Doc. Did Nola Madison tell you that she was Martha Corey? No, no, she denied it, but it's true just the same. I see. I'm not crazy, Steve. God knows sometimes I think I am, but this is true. Oh, my head is killing me. I just, I just have to sleep. Yeah, yeah, I'll get, I get you some aspirin. Relax. Sleep it off. I'll see you later, okay? How can I help you, Mrs. Madison? Well, actually, I'm fine. I came by to see how you were feeling. How thoughtful of you. Oh, I was hoping those delusions you've been suffering from have passed. Don't recall any delusions, thank you. You still think that neighbor of Deborah's is me in disguise? That I've been uh, giving her gifts of poisoned food? <laughs> it's utterly absurd. I think it's a remarkable coincidence that as soon as I suggested that was exactly what was happening, Mrs. Corey just moved right out. Oh, well, that is a coincidence, but only that. Look, Mrs. Mads, let's not play this cat and mouse game, all right? As long as Mrs. Corey is gone for good, then I'm not going to need to tell a soul about it. I'm very pleased about that for your sake. Had you made those basic, those baseless accusations, well, people would have thought you mad. Absolutely uh, paranoid. Well, that's all you came to say. Paranoid. Absolutely paranoid. Tim, how could you say that about me? Is it obvious? I was not in the house five minutes before you had your new lover over here. My lover? Are you crazy? Honey, you must have heard us talking about this field trip last night. I don't need to listen to your damn whispers. I knew what you were up, up to before I heard anything. Without hearing it, that's why, <laughs> that's why I pretended there was that field trip out of town. I bet you were overjoyed, both you and, and Derek, alone at last. Stop it! 
made one tiny mistake. Should have given you a little more time. Should have given you an extra couple of minutes so you could have both gotten upstairs. No, no, you're probably much happier down here, weren't you? So you wouldn't disturb the little kid. Oh, wait a second. Just wait a second. I've got more to tell you. Listen, I have to take care of that. Oh. Margo tell you what time she was getting back from that meeting? I thought the two of you worked hand in glove. I wish she'd hurry up. I want the privilege of telling her off. Draper, uh, look, please, can't you just wait until tomorrow? I mean, isn't it better to sleep on something before you do anything drastic? <sighs> Depends on what you mean by drastic. When I see Margo, I'm just going to tell her what I found out about her in New York. That she's a liar, a thief, and a blackmailer. She is a liar, April. She never told you she called Henson back that day. And then she made it sound as if it was Henson's decision not to hire me. She's a thief because she stole the best opportunity I've ever had. And a blackmailer because she threatened Henson. Draper, put the bottle down. Put the bottle down, put the glass down. If you insist on going over to Margot's tonight, you are going to have to drive there. Okay, I won't drink anymore. God, Satisfied? Please, please change your mind. Look, if, if nothing else, let me go with you. Draper, the three of us, we can talk about it. Like a family, I have a right to no, be No, I'm there. not going to let you go, April. You're going to be stuck in the middle like you're always stuck. Look, can't you see my side of this? Of course I do. But don't you think I have a right to be angry? Of course you have a right to be angry, and I was angry too when I first found out about it. Yeah but not angry enough to tell me. Well, I'd uh, offer you something to drink, but I don't have anything to offer. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, so listen, why, I've got an idea. Why don't I call room service and get us up something to eat, something to drink? Uh, uh, no thanks, Owen. I already ate. Well, I didn't, and I'm hungry. My doctor told me to throw out all the food in my house, so I haven't eaten much. <laughs> well, I tell you, they've got this tray of sandwiches or something. Uh, that's pretty quick. Sounds good. Okay, and uh, a bottle of Chablis? <laughs> mm -hmm. And some beer? Beer. Beer for the proletariat. <laughs> How uh, is Dr. Cavanaugh? Well, he's doing all right. I think he'll be okay, so... Sleeping it off over on my sofa. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I understand why he tied one on. Why? Well, he and Nicole got into a quarrel, and he moved out. I don't believe it. They have one of those marriages made in heaven, don't they? Well, you never know about a marriage after all the company goes home. Well, well, well. For somebody who's so for marriage, that certainly is a cynical statement. Well, there was another statement that he made that really bothered me. What's that? I mean, he was drunk. He was really stoned. Barely coherent. I don't know why, either, because the bottle was almost full. Maybe he has a low tolerance of liquor or Steve, something. Steve, you know. what did he say? Oh, it was about Martha Corey. Mrs. Corey? Mm-hmm. That she wasn't really her. It was like uh, she was Nola Madison in makeup. <laughs> well, that's... Yeah, I, I know. About the same thing. I thought he was out of his tree, but that's what he said. Okay. Is everybody ready? The uh, food's on its way, but it's going to be about half an hour. So, uh, what do you say? Why don't we watch the first cassette? Sure, that's a good idea. All right. There we go. Mm. <laughs> All right. Oh, wait a minute. I think that's the uh, the wrong tape there now. It might be some kind of a new introduction. No, no it's just wrong. Wait, wait a minute. Oh, no. Watches. Take from me the ugly countenance of sin. I yield my powers back to the chambers of hell. Oh, your servant, Esther Atherton, 
begs the mercy of the master of Hades. Thus do I evoke. Owen, can you freeze that frame for me? Yeah. My God. Deborah, do you see what I see? Does look just like her. Yeah, yeah, that's Nola. It's fantastic makeup, isn't it? Oh, yeah, fantastic. If you modify that makeup some, take off the wig, tone it down. I, I just don't believe this. And Miles was right. What are you two talking about? Owen, Nola has not only been playing a witch, but a next door neighbor. What? Nola has been living next door to Deborah for the last month or so under the name of Martha Corey. Yeah, that is true, Owen. Uh, I didn't dream that it could have been her. That's because you didn't see Nola Madison in the makeup of Hester Atherton before. Uh, I'd like to stay and watch the rest of your movie, but I have some police business to take care of. Yeah, so do I. I'm coming with you. No, no, no. no. You stay here. Talk to Owen about what's happened. I'll call you if anything comes up. I, t I mean, I just can't believe this. Nola? Nola. I don't know. Maybe there was something familiar about that person, but whatever it was, I sure didn't think about it at the time. Deborah, look, N Nola was, was supposed to be on vacation in the Caribbean. Well, of course she's going to tell you that. She was here in Monticello, Owen, all the time. God. She, she must have really been planning this one for a while. Well, now, look, come on. It could have been a coincidence. A lot of old people tend to resemble oh, each other. Owen, come on. Nobody looks like the witch in your movie. I am telling you that Hester Atherton and Martha Corey are the same people. God. Well, listen, you know what? It is true that you came back to Monticello a lot sooner than I thought, than I thought you would. Well, I, I'm just trying to think back. Oh, of course I remember the first time I saw her. She was pretending to be sick. I was leaving my apartment, and I heard some moaning and groaning across the hall. So I went over there, knocked on the door to see if I could help. The door was open, and she asked me to come in. How do you like that, huh? Very clever. What better way to get to somebody than to get them to do you a favor? Why would she do that? I mean, what is Nola going to get out of that? Oh, malicious pleasure, Owen. Oh. She knows everything about me. She knows all about my life. Are you saying that she was spying on you? Oh, that's the idea. Oh. I think she was probably trying to get some information together to use it against me, to get you to, to, to dislike me. Oh, Deborah, come on. She'd never do that. She was so kind to me, Owen. I just... I feel like such a fool. I believed her. She was lying to me all this time. Oh, God, that's not the only thing either. What else? Uh, she was there in the room listening to me when you called me from California. No. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, she was. I remember that night. I hope you don't think I'm being too motherly. <laughs> I appreciate you acting motherly toward me every <laughs> once in a while. It's... Would you like some tea? Oh, no, oh, please don't trouble. Why is there trouble at all? Come on in. Uh, I've got <sighs> plenty of hot water and lots of tea bags. Uh, Deborah, you, you told me about your father, but y you never uh, told me about your mother. Well, uh, there's nothing much to tell. I, she died when I was a baby. Oh, you poor child. Well, that's why I became so attached to my father. Isn't that usually the way it happens? Mm, still, a child needs a mother. Well, sometimes I think it's adults who need mothers most of all. <laughs> well, I'm a poor excuse for a mother. I know that. Just a lonely old woman living all by herself who bothers her neighbors much too late at no, night. Oh, no, no, you don't. I appreciate any motherliness you can hand out. Just don't do too much of it. You know, you've got a life of your own. Oh, well, my life doesn't mean very much. Not when you're alone. Excuse me. Hello. 
Deborah, God, you're home at last. God, I've been calling you all night. Owen? No, no, I'm, I'm still up. I was just out with some friends. Oh, God, it's good to hear your voice. I feel I haven't heard it in about a year. I haven't seen you in a century. God, she must have been enjoying that. Listening to me, talking to you in California, your own wife, oh, eavesdropping. God. Oh. Wasn't the only thing that was happening to me that night either. Oh, no. No. Oh, well, that was the night I got. S that was the night I got sick. In fact, that was the beginning of my illness. Say, that's right. No, wait a minute. Just tell me about that. What, what were the symptoms, actually? I, uh, I, I passed out that night. Uh, Steve had to knock down the door because I wasn't able to come. Oh, we had my. tea. We, it was the tea. It wasn't. I had tea with Mrs. Cor with Nola that night. <laughs> don't you don't you see the connection? I'm trying to tell you that Nola has been trying to poison me. Mrs. Corey? Mrs. Corey? Mrs. Corey! Oh, no, not you again. Please, don't break it down. I'm not gonna break down your door. I happen to be looking for the lady who lives here. Well, she rents the apartment. It doesn't mean she lives here all the time. Hey, aren't you with the girl next door? You switching to old ladies now? <laughs> Have you seen her? Do you know where she is? Not in a couple of weeks. For all I know, she could have dropped dead somewhere. Do you always look on the bright side of things? Listen, what good is an empty apartment? Look, did she leave an address? Uh, a forwarding address? Not a thing, no. Hey, is the old lady a crook? Maybe worse. Excuse me. Oh. Sorry about, huh? Look, I told you I'd save my choice comments until I got your mother in person. Hello? Margot, it's Draper. Oh, Draper, darling. Hello, how, how are you? How was your business trip? Very productive. I learned a great deal. Well, I... I Draper was terribly unhappy to have you out of town last night. It's too bad you had to stay over. You know, I'm afraid she's not much happier now that I'm back. I'm very angry, Margot. Why did things go that badly? Look, Margo, I want to talk to you. I want to see you right away. Oh, you mean you and April? No, Margo, just me. April wants to come with me, but I won't let her. She's not going to like what I have to say. What do you mean? Margo, when I was in New York, I didn't go there just to see a client. I saw David Henson's widow. Oh, yes, I, I heard that he had died, the poor man. Uh, I'm sure you, that makes you very sad, Margo, especially since the two of you were such good friends. Mrs. Henson told me exactly how good. She also told me that her husband would have done anything for you. Look, whatever she told you was probably grossly exaggerated. I'm afraid the woman does not like me very Look, much. Look, Margo, I'll be over there in half an hour. We'll talk about it then. Uh, no, uh, Draper, don't come over when you're in such a bad mood. You probably say something you'll regret. Look, call me tomorrow and we'll set up a meeting. No, Margo, it's going to be tonight. If I don't get the answers to these questions, I swear to God, you'll never set foot in my house again. All right, um... But, uh, not right this minute. I have, um, an errand I have to take care of. Uh, could you make it in about an hour? I'll see you then. She's going to see me in an hour. 
she's got an errand to run. Why are you getting ready to go now? I mean, it only takes a half an hour to get over Because I'm going to go for a drive. You said to cool down. Wait, but look, please, why don't you just wait until tomorrow, huh? I mean, things always look a little brighter in the morning. No, you know? April. I've got to take care of this tonight. Then I'm going with no. you. No. Just stay right here. Try to understand. 